So after a lot of scouring of the internet, I managed to find the cheapest adult sized scooter available. So by adult sized, I don't only mean big enough for an adult to stand on, but it also has to have enough power to propel an adult at full speed. So it had to have at least a 350 watt motor. So here we have the iScooter i9. So is the scooter as fantastic as the price? Let's find out. Woo! Welcome back to the VRC and here we have a tech video featuring the iScooter i9 but first let me tell you about the VR giveaway. VR accessories brand Kiwi Design have kindly offered to give away two bundles of accessories for your Quest 2. Two lucky winners will be receiving the amazing Kiwi Elite strap that I reviewed on my last video, the best knuckle grips you can get for your Quest 2 and the Kiwi Design facial interface. So to be in with a chance of winning that amazing bundle, make sure you're subscribed and you like this video, then head over to the Kiwi Design Facebook page and give them a like too. And then you'll have to do one more thing that I'll tell you about later in the video. Not necessarily at the end though, so keep listening. The two winners of Dash Dash World from my last tech video are Nero71 and Sarah S. So make sure you reply to the pinned comment so we can sort out your game codes. So, let's do a quick unboxing of the scooter before we find out how good it actually is. The iScooter i9 arrived a day after they sent it, which was absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. The website does say that they can ship it to you within two to three days, depending on where you are, of course, but I was not prepared for just how fast this delivery was going to be. When it came, it was well packed in the devil's packaging, polystyrene. <laughs> this is gonna be fun getting it out of that. I really can't stand that stuff. When I got it out, I have to say I was pretty shocked at the quality of it. It is based, of course, on the very popular Xiaomi M365 scooter design with the very nice display built into the neck, which displays speed and allows you to turn on the lights and switch from comfort mode, which defaults at a relaxing 9 miles per hour, and sport mode that goes up to 15.5 miles per hour or 25 kilometers per hour, which I think is the limit for most countries. Of course, in the UK, there is no e-scooter speed limit because they're all illegal on account of them taking up so much space on the roads and polluting the atmosphere. I oh know, that's, that's cars. Unfortunately, it got a bit dark as I unpacked it, so my first ever ride on an e-scooter was a quick ride in the garden, where I gave myself permission as the landowner to have a go. I have to say it went better than expected over my lumpy grass. The next evening though, we caught a plane to America and found a street that looked a bit like the UK so I didn't get homesick, and out I went for my first ever ride on an e-scooter. It's time, you ready? Yeah, I am. Hang on, I'm gonna... I'm oh, what mode am I... Oh, oh. I don't know what mode I'm in. This is cool. This is, this is faster than I thought it'd be, to be honest. It's... <laughs> Brake test. Jeez. Oh God, I've done a skid. I've done a skid. Jesus Christ. Whoops. Sorry, pavement. You reckon the council property? Yeah. So Red S is sport mode. I've got to say that I was actually pretty damn shocked at how fast it was. We've been travelling about on kick scooters quite a lot lately and I kind of assumed that standard e-scooters wouldn't be that much faster. Of course I've watched a ton of videos on e-scooters and I've seen them around so I know how fast they can be but I really didn't expect much from this one especially considering the price but wow! Wow! So as I mentioned, the motor is 350 watts, which is nice. Of course, you don't tend to kick when you're on an e-scooter, so unlike an e-bike, where 250 watts is the standard in most places, 350 watts is really the minimum you want for a commuting e-scooter. The battery is a 7.5 amp hour battery, which is good for about 15.5 miles in good conditions and being of an average weight, which is plenty for the kind of commute that people might want to make on something like this. And if you are going to work, then you can just fold it up and plug it in under your desk. And as you can see, the scooter very easily fits inside a car boot. The charge port's on the side of the scooter with a little rubber cover. Pull it out and stick the charger in, like so. 
Charge time is about four to five hours and it weighs a paltry 12.5 kilograms. The 8.5 inch tires are not pneumatic, so they're not air filled. They're solid rubber, but actually they go over bumpy terrain much smoother than I expected and much smoother than my Razor kick scooter. They aren't as smooth as air filled tires, but they are pretty nice and I didn't feel like a bumpy path would vibrate my head off. The i9 only has one brake handle, which might be concerning, but it seemed fine for the amount of power it delivers. It is a dual brake system though, meaning it has a rear disc brake as well as an electronic brake. Some scooters only have an electronic brake, remember, so it's nice that this one does have two. It's got a thumb throttle, which has a nice feel to it. It's my first time using a thumb throttle, and I have to say I really, really liked it. The handlebar grips felt nice, and I felt very secure standing on the base of the scooter. All in all, it's a very comfortable scooter. When not in use, it folds down extremely quickly, and it has a safety clasp on the latch, so you don't accidentally fold down the scooter when you're on it. If you're storing it temporarily, the scooter also has a kickstand that you can actually kick to put up and to put away, unlike my Razor kick scooter. The lights on the handlebars and the rear mudguard are very nice, and there's also reflectors at the front and the back to increase your visibility even more. It also has a nice little bell just in case you need to get past someone who hasn't seen you yet. So as we watch the ride through the American nighttime streets, the next thing you have to do if you want to win the VR goodies is leave a comment telling us where you would go on an e-scooter. So like the video, make sure you're subbed to the channel, especially if you love VR and cool tech, and leave the comment about where you go on the e-scooter. Do not mention the giveaway in your comment. I want people who have actually watched the video to have a chance of winning. Back to the scooter, and in terms of water, the scooter is rated at an IP54, which means you can ride it in the rain and you can get it wet, but obviously don't go submerging the thing in the water as that will bust it up. I loaned the scooter to some guy in a helmet that looks a bit like me and he went on a ride with my son and he took it through muddy trails as well as thick wet grass and it did all right. But I did get a bit worried about the wet grass so I did jump off. I mean, he jumped off. I've got to say that this e-scooter has been so much fun to ride on. It's no 3000 watt monster, but it's definitely fast enough for a zippy commute in the morning as well as a nice relaxing cruise with the wind in your hair. And guess what? It can actually go a bit faster than 15.5 miles per hour. By using the app, that's right, this cheapo scooter has an app. You can actually change the speed of both comfort mode and sport mode to get up to a maximum of 19 miles per hour. The app is actually a really cool feature and something I'd expect from a much more expensive e-scooter. You just boot it up, it's called Mini Robot. It automatically just finds the scooter straight away. You don't have to do anything on the scooter at all. It just knows it's there. It tells you the battery life of the scooter. It can tell you the speed of the scooter. It can tell you what you've got the speed limiter at because through the app, you can actually increase the speed. You can go to the settings. So let's go to the settings and you can turn cruise control on and off. You can change metric kilometers per hour to imperial miles per hour. You can switch between sport mode and comfort mode through the app, but you can also do that here just by pressing down the button twice. And it goes to a green S. Twice again, back to a red S, which is sport mode. And then there's a slider, which you can decrease. So you can actually decrease sport mode down to six miles per hour, and then you can increase it up to 18, but I think it's about 18.6. And you can turn on zero start. So zero start, which uh, comes default with off. When zero start is off, it just means you've got to kick it up to a certain speed before the motor kicks in. Without doing that, it does absolutely nothing. You can also turn the lights on and off using the app. So on, off, very nice. And you can actually lock it. So it's locked now. So now no one can take your scooter away. It beeps when they try and do it. So they need to steal it, they need to resort to other methods. <laughs>
And finally, the app also has an information page, which when you go on it, it tells you your estimated remaining mileage from the battery. So, because I've got four blocks left, it still says I've got 13.6 miles. Uh, the mileage for the current journey, the total miles that you've done, the temperature of the scooter, the total driving time that you spent on the scooter, current speed, remaining power, battery temperature, although they're, uh, they're dashed off at the moment. Battery capacity, current voltage, power, error code, warning code, electric control version, Bluetooth version, app version, and firmware upgrades. I'm currently on the latest version. So that brings us on to the negative. What exactly is wrong with this e-scooter, especially at this price? Well, I'm not about to start nitpicking at the brand of the disc brakes because the brakes are fine. The brake handle is plastic, so a bit of money was saved there. And maybe if you're a bit heavier, it might struggle with some hills, but that's the same on all 350 watt e-scooters. But having said that, it managed to get a 15 stone plus person up normal hills pretty well. The battery isn't removable, so you do need to take the entire scooter to the charger, but it's so compact and light, it's not really a problem. Honestly, the quality of this scooter for how much it costs is actually pretty shocking, and you get a nice free bag too. iScooter have provided me with a discount code, 80VRC. If you put that in on the checkout, if you get it from the iScooter website, you get 80 pounds off, which means you can now get it with that super fast delivery for 260 pounds. I can't really praise this scooter enough. The saddest thing about it is the state of affairs in the UK with regards to e-scooters. They truly are amazing little vehicles. The fact that there's this little transport device that fits under my desk that could get me to the shops and back without polluting the atmosphere and it's illegal, it doesn't make any sense. Unlike e-bikes, for example, they all come with front and rear lights and brake lights. They don't use person power, so generally they're slower than their equivalent e-bike and lighter, and yet they're classed differently to make them illegal. I hope the law changes soon and they get treated the same as e-bikes. I won't go into exactly how I'd want it changed in this video, but please do let me know in the comments your thoughts. I would love to hear them. I'd like to thank iScooter for sending me the i9 to review. I didn't sign any contracts or anything and they didn't get to watch the video before I published it, so all the views are my own. It's honestly such a cool scooter and I definitely recommend getting one. Just be careful, wear the relevant safety gear, especially if you're on the roads, and the law in the UK is that they can only be ridden on public land with the landowner's permission. So if caught out in public, you could have your scooter seized and then could even get six points on your license. Even if you're a kid who can't yet drive, the six points will be waiting for you when you finally pass your test. So what do you think about that? Luckily, it does seem that most of the time, if the police see someone riding them responsibly, they don't get that extreme, which is nice that a bit of common sense is being used, especially as it would actually be perfect for the police to keep in their car if they need to chase someone down on foot. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed that or found it helpful, do smash the thumbs up button. And thank you so much for watching to the end. If you're still here, you are truly the best. If you're enjoying the electric transport content, then check out my other channel, EVRC, where I basically ride around on the e-bike chatting about anything I can think of. Check out the description for the link. I'd love to say hello to you over there. Also, I'd love to hear from you if you've ridden an electric unicycle. They look very interesting, to be honest, and I'm starting to think I need to get one on the channel. So thank Thanks again for watching, take care of yourselves and hopefully I'll see you next time. That was a VRC Tech Video. See ya!